Broadcasting live from somewhere in the Shadow Realm, this is Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Here's your host, Doug Dimadoo. Hey there, welcome to another episode of Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links Talk. Today, we're going to look at the newest box set that just came out, Echoes of Silence. And this one started on August 30th, 2017. It's another mini box, which means there's only 80 packs, and which means there's only one copy of each ultra rare and each super rare in each box set. But it does make it easier for you to go back in there, reset the box, and try again for another copy after you acquire the cards that you want. So what we're going to look at today are the ultra rares and super rares within this box set, and it uh, should be pretty good. Uh, the first one here is Silent Magician Level 8. This is the monster on the cover of the box. It is a level 8 spellcaster, 3500 attack, 1000 defense. It cannot be normal summoned or set and must be special summoned by Silent Magician Level 4 and cannot be special summoned by other ways. And it's unaffected by your opponent's spell effects. So what I want to first do before we continue through uh, all the ultra rares and super rares is then just take a look at Silent Magician Level 4. It's only a rare in this box set so you should be able to get it pretty easily which means Means there are, I believe, five copies in each box set. But Silent Magician Level 4 is a level 4 <laughs> spellcaster, if you can imagine. Each time your opponent draws a card, place one spell counter on this card, maximum of five. This card gains 500 attack for each spell counter on it. During the standby phase of your next turn, after the fifth spell counter is placed on this card, you can send this face-up card with five spell counters on it to the graveyard. Special summon one Silent Magician level eight from your hand or deck. And it starts off with a 1,000 attack and 1,000 defense. So, which means it'll get at least, or it'll get up to a 2,500 attack boost uh, just from the uh, spell counters being added onto it. So, eventually by the time you're ready to upgrade to your Silent Magician level eight, the attack and defense are going to be the same for your Silent Magician level 4 as they would be for your uh, then your Silent Magician level 8. But the better part is that that level 8 will not be affected by spells. So that's pretty much how you get uh, get from level 4 to level 8 uh, with that combo play. And there are other ways to get there. Uh, one of which is, uh, I believe there's a level up card that is available as well. Um, but anyway, we'll, we'll get to that um, in a little while. But the next ultra rare that we have here is Spear Dragon. It's a level 4 dragon, 1900 attack, 0 defense. During battle between this attacking card and a defense position monster whose defense is lower than the attack of this card, inflict the difference as battle damage to your opponent. If this card attacks, it is changed to defense position at the end of the damage step. So with Spear Dragon, it's got that 1900 attack, which is awesome for a level 4. The one drawback is, of course, that it has to then switch itself to defense position and should be pretty easy to be destroyed since it's sitting there with a zero defense. Uh, but still, for an ultra rare, it's not bad uh, as far as getting a 1900 attack monster out there quickly, doing whatever damage you need to do. Uh, and also, too, it's nice that uh, that you're able to inflict piercing battle damage if the defense of the uh, monster being attacked is lower than the attack of Spear Dragon. So, uh, overall, not a bad ultra rare, but uh, I don't know. This kind of feels to me more like a super rare than an ultra rare, just given what it is. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see what other kind of combos are out there. So, now we'll get into the super rares. The first one is Ultimate Instant. Insect level 7. It's a level 7 insect, go figure. 2600 attack, 1200 defense. If this card was special summoned by the effect of ultimate insect level 5, while it remains on the field, all of your opponent's monsters lose 700 attack and defense. So this is a really good secondary effect if you're able to combo it out with ultimate insect level 5 and get your insect level 7 out here. Uh, it's just a nice way to just across the board lower your opponent's monsters attacks and defense. So uh, yeah, this, this could be one of the cards that will bring, um, bring insect monsters back into the forefront with some of those weevil decks. So hopefully it's not just burns from here on out. Hopefully we'll see some more insect variances. Uh, next, there's Vortex Trooper, a level 3 super rare aqua, 0 attack, 600 defense. When this card is normal summoned, you can shuffle 2 cards from your hand into the deck and then draw 2 cards. When this card is destroyed, draw 1 card. So it nets out pretty well, uh, seeing as maybe if you, if you have some stuff in your hand that maybe you don't necessarily need, this gives you an opportunity upon normal summon to shuffle 2 back into the deck and draw 2 more. Uh, but also its effect, because you know with its low attack and defense stats, it will be destroyed. So once it is, at least you get to draw one more card out of that. So this is a good way to kind of go through your deck if... Uh 
you know, I guess in certain situations, this card can be a pretty good one. However, because you have to normal summon this card, you're sitting out there with a zero attack monster on the field, and that could spell trouble if you don't have anything to either stall your opponent from attacking in that next turn, or to activate something to switch Vortex Trooper to defense position, which, yeah, you could always adjust for and add those kind of cards into your deck, but just something to look out for. Uh, next super rare we have is Green Kappa. It is a level 3 warrior flip monster with 650 attack and 900 defense. When it's flipped, you target two set spell and trap cards on the field and destroy those targets. You notice how it just says target two set spell or trap cards. It doesn't say your opponent's. So this also means that you could target some of your own. So this could actually work out with uh, with certain, uh, you know, like Wild Tornado and stuff like that, that when destroyed, you can destroy any card on your opponent's side of the field or a monster on your opponent's side of the field. So you could combo this out pretty well with some cards that cause some destruction when they're destroyed by setting them first. So Green Kappa does have a lot of good play potential. This is a card that uh, can be used in a multitude of decks. This is one that doesn't really just jive with one archetype or anything. This is one that currently in Duel Links can be a very good utility card, so I like this one a lot. Uh, next super we have is Spell Power Grasp, and what this is is you target one face-up card on the field that you can place a spell counter on and place one spell counter on that target. Then you could add one Spell Power Grasp from your deck to your hand. You can only activate one Spell Power Grasp per turn. So this is the kind of card that you would want to run three copies of in your deck if you're going to be doing this type of... Uh, this type of strategy where you're dealing with spell counters, especially with uh, you know your your level four and your level eight uh, silent magicians, uh, if you're trying to get spell counters involved on that, this could be one of the fastest ways to uh, to get things moving. Uh, so yeah, overall this card could be very useful. Definitely worth trying to go through the box a few times if you want to run that type of deck and get three copies of it. So uh, next card we have is Emergency Provisions. It's a quick play spell card where you send any number of other spell and trap cards you control to the graveyard and then gain 1,000 life points for each card sent to the graveyard that way. So I like the fact that you can also, again, target something like a Wild Tornado and send it to the graveyard. Uh, now again, because it says send to the graveyard and not destroy, I don't necessarily know if the effect activates. I'm curious to see, but I think it still should. Um, but either way, regardless, this is a good quick way for you to get a boost uh, in life points. I could see this being paired very well with some kind of uh, uh, some kind of mausoleum deck or some kind of three-star demotion deck where you do need to refuel on your life points after using them for certain effects. So emergency provisions can be a pretty good card depending on the deck. Uh, anyway, we're going to get into some field spell cards. The first one is Rising Air Current. This super air card increases the attack of all wind monsters by 500 points and decrease their defense by 400 points. So this could come in handy. But then there's also another similar card, uh, Yumi Ruka, and it is another field spell card where you increase the attack of all water monsters by 500 points and decrease their defense by 400 points. So... Uh, really, really good attack boosters. I could already see uh, Umi Ruka being paired up with a Starboy deck build and really just beefing up your water type monsters rather quickly. It seems like Mako is getting more and more and more support with every box set, seemingly. Uh, and this just adds to it. Next, you got Limit Reverse. It's a continuous trap card where you target one monster with 1,000 attack or less in your graveyard and special summon it in attack position. If the target is changed to defense position, destroy it in this card. When this card leaves the field, destroy the target, and when the target is destroyed, destroy this card. So what this does is kind of act as uh, kind of a a pseudo treeborn frog and and pulls a weak monster from your graveyard sets it on your field i would activate this at the beginning of your turn uh the turn after you set this card pull a monster back out of the graveyard put it in attack position and hopefully use it as tribute fodder so limit reverse really does feed into the tribute strategy which it seems like dual links and konami in general is trying to push a lot of players uh in that direction rather than relying so much on special summons so limit reverse is just one of those opportunities to basically recycle cards that end up in your graveyard and potentially either reactivate their effects, which is always one method, but number two is to uh, also use it as uh, fodder for tribute summoning. So keeping it in attack position is uh, just something that you have to consider. Uh, but yeah, overall, it's just a really, really good trap card and one that I would definitely want a copy of if I go through this deck. So just based off of my going through with the ultra rares and the super rares, there are some really good cards involved here. Uh, is it something that I'm going to be spending my gems on? Probably not, uh, just because I would like to wait and see, I guess, what the next set is going to evolve, because 
It seems like uh, seems like in recent uh, recent weeks, Dawn of Destiny was a very very good mini box uh, that just it seemed like overall it was better than Echoes of Silence just at a first glance. Now once I start seeing different deck builds and once I start kind of looking at how things synergize with current and future decks, Echoes of Silence could be a very good mini box overall. But for now, uh, it's just kind of in the middle of the road for me. Just just kind of my offhand opinion on it. I've been seeing a lot of people who are just absolutely. Uh, ranting and raving about Echoes of Silence, and there's a lot to be excited about. Uh, just for me, because of my play style, Echoes of Silence is just not the mini box set for me. I'll be hanging on to my gems for the next one. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'd like to hear your opinions on this box set. Uh, what do you think of the ultra rares? What do you think of the super rares? Uh, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter at Yu Gi Oh! Deck Talk. It's all one word at Yu Gi Oh! Deck Talk. And uh, also, too, we have a blog. It's uh, We did a, a short analysis of Echoes of Silence on the blog, and that's located at Yu Gi Oh! Deck Talk. WordPress.com. It's Yu Gi Oh! Deck Talk. WordPress.com. And there you can find our uh, kind of our small breakdown of Echoes of Silence. Uh, but yeah, we just touched on a few of the highlight cards, but uh, with today, I want to at least discuss all of the super rares. So uh, yeah, some pretty good cards overall. Anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys. Feel free to reach out, talk to me anytime. Uh, that's it for today's episode. Thanks again for tuning in, and we'll see you next time. Take care.